Okay, so we are now <clears throat> going to do our last two mid-career awards. Then we'll be doing the poster session awards and then some closing remarks from Amy Glassmeyer. And uh, the first ambassador that's going to be presenting the Education Leadership Award is Dr. Barbara Cates Garnick. Um, Bobby is the interrupt Interim Director of Energy, Climate, and Innovation Program at the Fletcher School at Tufts, and she's also um, teaching there too. And Bobby is somebody who I have gotten to know pretty well over the past couple of years, and I would say she's definitely been a mentor to me. Um, she just, how many months ago, maybe two or three, um, left the um, Patrick administration to uh, where she was Undersecretary of Energy for the state. And she's a great person, and uh, I remember her being one of the people that Sue Tierney ref reflected upon who had been a heroine of hers. So, all right, Bob. Thank you, Mark. So as I introduce the next panelists, I just have to say that these have been an amazing two days of sisterhood, and we truly are a sisterhood. And the reason we're a sisterhood is because we're supporting all women, women in all stages of their career development. And that's what makes this next award particularly special. Because Dr. Deborah Rowe demonstrates the deepest of commitments to leadership in the area of education for sustainability. And we all know that it is really that next generation that is the important generation, and that's why we do, in many respects, what we do. Um, she created one of the first renewable energy programs in the country and helped 13 STEM academic professional associations create a shared resource. And really, this notion of connectivity is very important. This resource, the STEM resource, was called Sustainable Sustainability improves student learning, all about teaching, and she impacted 400,000 teachers in higher education. So that's a huge wow as far as I can see. She's worked at the community college level. She works at K through 12. She's worked at the, um, at the university level, creating the foundations for teaching students about sustainability, teaching the teachers, which is really important, and empowering people to be change agents. And I think that's all that we heard about today and yesterday, change agents. When it's looking at her many accomplishments, it's clear that Dr. Rowe has a passion for work. And I think that's what we heard today, passion, um, is very important. Beyond her job, she speaks and writes frequently nationally and internationally on the topic of sustainability and communicates this commitment as she both looks at education and workforce issues. She also recognizes the need to empower women entering the clean, um, the clean energy field through sharing stories of women making a difference and encouraging them in the early stages of their career. And I think so much of what we did today was the sharing of stories. And I think that's what makes a tremendous difference as we support each other. So it's an honor um, to present this C3E award for the recognition to Dr. Rowe for the work she has done in the past and what she's going to do in the future. Thank you so much for inspiring so many, especially those in the early stages, committing themselves to sustainability and those further along for excellence. So please come up and accept your award. Thank you very much. I need a new fireplace mantle from all these. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so it's so interesting because my comments are di directly related to what you all were just talking about. I'm honored to be given the award. I wanna thank my nominators, my department chair, one of my students. I wanna thank my partner. I have a very supportive partner who helps me co-parent and create balance in my life. Uh, I wanna accept this on behalf of all of the clean energy and sustainability champions in higher education and K-12 and also in formal education. I also wanna give thanks. I am a fourth generation change agent. Growing up in a family where we were always looking at the systemic problems going on in society and then just going out and creating the solutions and recognizing that the hierarchy is made up. It's made up and you can change it. 
So I want to also give thanks to all of the change agents who were committed to solve our societal challenges, and many of you in this room fit in that category. I want to take a moment to celebrate the robust trend that we have created in education. We now have 1,800 new interdisciplinary degrees, certificates, minors in sustainability. We need more in clean energy. By the way, I have to say something. You've seen different views today of what clean energy is. You've also seen people who think that everybody can live like we do in the United States, and if they did, we'd need four to six planets of resources, and we only have one. We must stop burning fossil fuels, and we have to do it very urgently. So that's a real challenge. So please don't go away with a business as usual scenario about this. We've got to create those strategies that are really going to shift our institutional systems. We've done it before. We can do it again. And I'm here to help you with that. And so are a whole bunch of people in the higher ed network. So reach out to us. We also have a president's climate commitment, college and university presidents who have stood up and said, we have read the science. Climate change is happening. We are measuring our greenhouse gas emissions, and we are committed to getting off of them as soon as possible. There are many colleges and universities that have already done that, and there are many more that are deeply on their way. We also want to celebrate a nonprofit that we made up with just a handful of us using advice from the women who organized for the UN Decade for Women. It's called the U.S. Partnership for Education for Sustainable Development. We made it up for many reasons, but in part so that as president, I could walk back into the higher ed building in Washington, D.C. and get past all the gatekeepers, talk to the CEOs, the executive directors, and say, these are very powerful sentences, you are in a unique and important position to help create a sustainable future. We can't imagine doing this without you. We are convening a meeting in Washington, D.C., and we will help you start your national sustainability initiatives and have done so in over 60 national higher education associations. So I have some career advice to you. Build your skills. You know the speaker today who talked about if you're not good at something, then don't do it? All of you, build your skills for persuasion. And per do, use persuasion in a way where you listen first, connect to people's passions, build a joint vision, and a commitment to action. In other words, understand and manage both the informational and emotional components of decision making and action. If you haven't been reading the social science research on how we create a sustainable future, do so. Because even the STEM discipline said we need those social science disciplines to help us implement these solutions. Recognize that the hierarchy you can change, know how to cold call, Know how to find your mentors, multiple mentors. Know persistence, emotional coping with rejection. We'll all face rejection. And resilience. If you're not good at it, practice. Always do an analysis of the formal and informal power structures. Identify the leverage points for change and build effective coalitions to make a difference. Set your goals. If you can't be the CEO and they're not putting you on the board, be a shareholder and show up at the shareholder meetings. I've done it, and then the CEO came up and said, I want you to work with my head of strategy. You can have a lot of fun with that. I can help you with it. Go for creating systemic change for a sustainable future. Use the media. Somebody said to me, call the guy at the New York Times and tell him what you're doing. I said, you're kidding. Six months later, I did, and it worked. Call the key reporters in the different media outlets. Tell them what you're up to. Also, the best piece of advice I was ever given was somebody said to me, the next time somebody asks you to come speak, say to them, sorry, I only do keynotes. <laughs> and I did, and it worked. And for two decades, I've been doing keynote speeches nationally and internationally. <laughs> Very important, do not live with physical or emotional abuse. Do not live with physical or emotional abuse. Learn how to give feedback with empowerment, enthusiasm, and kindness. Learn the ABCs of preventing burnout. Find where your giggles are and make sure you put some into your life each day. Create the jobs that don't exist yet. My job, don't have to chase after soft money. Community college professor, don't have to publish or perish. I get to publish if I want to. I can be an activist all the time. And it's a great schedule for raising a family. If your corporation isn't family friendly, take those affinity groups for women and push for it to be family friendly. Understand 
that we have to create a vision for sustainable abundance. Understand what is quality of life, and it's not about consuming more unsustainable stuff. Make sure you can speak your vision for sustainable abundance in a Democratic voice, a Republican voice, a Libertarian voice, an undecided voice. All of those arguments exist. Get a title. If you need a title, come talk to us. We have a fellows program. We can give you a title. <laughs> what am I going to do with this money that you're giving me? We're going to support civic engagement. You kept hearing that. Didn't you, the importance of civic engagement for renewable energies and energy efficiency? Let's get all of it that's viable installed. It'll be the majority of our energy. Let's get it done. We have chorus campus and community conversations leading to pushing each state to com complete their clean energy power plan and to include renewable energies and energy efficiency and to do it across the political spectrum. Learning the skills of civil discourse. So my final advice Remember to be playful every day. I gave a speech to an interfaith group. Sustainability at its core is really about a loving each other beyond just our close family and friends. Use the business research to rethink our economy, to rethink our work structures, to look at what's going on in Europe, to, cre to re create family-friendly corporations. Question the structure of the corporate charter. Join Moms Rising even if you're not a mom. And use our networks in higher education to help you get your work done so we can create a sustainable future for all. Thank you.